Hello, my name's Joe Carlos. I'm a writer for the uh, American Gunsmith Magazine. We're here at Camp Perry, Ohio for the National Service Rifle Matches. And I wanted to talk to you this morning about barrel harmonics and about tuning harmonics in the AR-15. I don't claim to be an expert uh, on harmonics. My degree is in wildlife, it's not in physics. I wrote an article recently for the uh, American Gunsmith, and in that article at, at the beginning, I um, quoted uh, a uh, Nobel Prize winner, uh, physics prize winner, and he said something to the effect that um, if you think you understand quantum physics, you probably don't understand quantum physics. And I said, I think that's probably the same for barrel harmonics. If you think, if most of us think we understand barrel harmonics, we probably don't. But I'm going to do the best I can uh, to give you some tips that I do know will help you make uh, better AR-15s and get better accuracy out of your AR-15s. Most coins that I've seen have two sides on them, and uh, barrel harmonics is an example of that. The old school way of dealing with barrel harmonics was to tune your ammunition to the harmonics that the gunsmith gave you. And that's still a valid uh, technique. Using that technique, you uh, change powder types, you change the uh, amount of the powder charge, you change the seating depth of the bullet, and oftentimes you change uh, bullets as well. You can still do that. Uh, and you probably should do that after you tune uh, the barrel harmonics. Barrel, harmon barrel harmonics then is the other side of that coin. We're taking uh, given ammunition and we're tuning the gun to optimize that ammunition. Not everybody hand loads. Uh, some folks choose not to and, and they uh, uh, buy ammunition. Other people, uh, such as military folks, are issued ammunition, and these techniques will all work uh, in that case where you have uh, given ammunition that you're trying to make the gun shoot better with. One of the first techniques that the AR-15 community uh, as a whole uh, used to um, tune barrel harmonics in the AR-15 was to manipulate the flash suppressor. Using that technique, uh, we started with the A1 flash suppressor. The A1 flash suppressor does not have uh, this filled in area. It has flutes all the way around the outside, which makes it uh, a very good flash suppressor to use when tuning barrel uh, harmonics. The Vortex flash suppressor is another non-directional flash suppressor that works well uh, for tuning harmonics. The way this works then with the flash suppressor is um, the, the tiny little peel washers that you use when you're timing this flash suppressor can be uh, added to on the barrel, thus moving the position of the flash suppressor. Each tiny little um, um, shim moves the uh, position of the flash suppressor about one clock hour on a 12-hour clock face. So if I have uh, a flash suppressor in this position uh, that it is now, which is normal, and I unscrew the flash suppressor, put on an extra uh, peel washer, and screw the flash suppressor back, that moves the position of the flash suppressor to one o'clock on a 12-hour clock face. On the other hand, if I, if I spin the flash suppressor off and I remove a um, peel washer, that will time the flash suppressor back to 11 o'clock instead. So if we start with the flash suppressor uh, in a 12 o'clock position, we uh, shoot groups with known lots of ammunition and uh, keep those groups then we spin the flash suppressor off, add uh, one peel washer, 
screw the fly suppressor back in place, it'll now be timed to one o'clock instead. We repeat the shooting with the same lots of ammo and compare uh, the groups. Then we can spin the flash suppressor off, add another uh, section of peel washer, put it back on, the flash suppressor will now be uh, timed to two o'clock, shoot more groups, compare them uh, to the original group that started at six o'clock. Normally by the time you've made one complete revolution of the flash suppressor back to its original 12 o'clock starting position, you found the sweet spot for that rifle uh, as determined by the size of the groups and you can lock it in then with, with Loctite and make it a, a permanent installation. The next uh, technique that we're going to talk about has to do with the um, with the amount of torque that we apply to the barrel nut. I assume that everybody uh, watching this is familiar with the barrel nut on an AR-15. It has these uh, teeth in it, and those teeth, as you're well aware, line up so that the gas tube goes through the gap in the tooth and in through the clover leaf of the receiver and uh, back so that the uh, bolt carrier uh, can match up with it. Before you start uh, using this tuning technique that I'm going to talk about next, you probably need to do something about the fit of the barrel extension to the front of the receiver. As you can see, this is very sloppy. This technique will work uh, with all that slop in there, but it won't work optimally. So you want to do something to tighten the fit of the barrel extension to the upper receiver. And I covered that in uh, a two-part article for the American Gunsmith. It was the first uh, article that I wrote for the magazine. It appeared in the March and April 2013 issues of the magazine and it was titled Barrel Extension Diameter in the AR-15. If you review those uh, two articles, it will help you um, get this fit tight the way that it needs to be done. I don't have time to go over it again, uh, but the, um, the articles will um, tell you how to do that. So, after I've uh, fitted my barrel extension up to my receiver so that it's good and tight, then I can start the tuning process using the barrel nut torque. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to vary the amount of torque uh, on my torque wrench that I apply to the barrel nut, and that's going to influence uh, the barrel harmonics. Now, returning to our earlier discussion, most of you are going to say, but the barrel nut itself is going to get in the way uh, because you have to have a, a certain amount of torque on there to line the gas tube up with these teeth in the barrel nut. And you're absolutely right in saying that. And the way to fix that problem is to just simply get out a, a grinder or a Dremel tool or uh, whatever you happen to have, and uh, spin your barrel nut on so that it's tight, determine which of those uh, teeth on the barrel nut is the offending tooth that's going to get in the, uh, in the way of the gas tube, and just knock it off of there. File it, file it down, hit this area with a little bit of uh, touch-up, and that's going to give you a wide range that you're going to be able to move uh, that um, barrel nut by varying the torque on the torque wrench. So after you've done that, I recommend that you uh, assemble the rifle with um, 47 foot-pounds of torque on a heavy barrel
This is a heavy barrel uh, like the folks are using out here at Camp Perry this week. It's one inch under the hand guards and then forward of the hand guards it looks just like a standard AR-15. So if you're building one of those guns, put 47 foot-pounds of pressure on the um, barrel nut. On the other hand, if you're building uh, more of a rack grade gun, like um, you would find in uh, military armories all over the country, where you have the traditional uh, A2 contour, which is skinny under the hand guards, you would set your initial torque at 60 foot-pounds. Having done that, you're ready to head to the range. As with the flash suppressor method, we're going to uh, start with our 47 or 60 foot-pounds of uh, torque, and we're going to shoot groups with a couple of known lots of ammunition or ammunition that you're going to use. Uh, and then we're going to uh, change the torque on the barrel nut. This will involve um, um, removing the hand guards and getting into, um, getting into where you can uh, put your torque wrench on your um, barrel nut. You can vary the torque up or vary the torque down. doesn't make any difference. Let's just say that uh, for argument's sake that we're going to increase the torque and that we're working with a, a national match um, barrel. So our initial torque was at 47 foot-pounds. I'm going to change it by 10 foot-pounds each time and I'm going to go to 57 foot-pounds for the next setting. Go back out to the range, do the, repeat what you did uh, just a few moments ago by shooting groups with the new torque setting. Compare the targets uh, of the, the first torque setting of 47 pounds to the ones at 57 pounds and see which is better. Let's say that the 57 foot pound uh, made the group better. As long as you're getting better, you want to continue to go in that direction. So uh, go back in the shop, change the torque setting to 67 foot pounds. Go back out, shoot more groups see which are better. If 67 foot-pounds is better, continue on uh, to 77 foot-pounds. On the other hand, if 67 foot-pounds uh, is, is worse, you know you've passed your sweet spot. Now, let's go back a few steps. Uh, we've shot uh, 47 foot-pounds. We've got our groups. We shoot 57 foot-pounds, and let's say this time it gets worse. 57 foot-pounds are worse than 47 foot-pounds. The gun is telling you that you are going in the wrong direction and you want to go in the other direction and you'll do that. The, the gun knows what it wants. All you have to do is be smart enough to understand what it's telling you and it is telling you in your test targets. So we find that 57 foot-pounds shot poorer this time than 47 foot-pounds what are we going to do? Obviously, we're going to go down to 37 foot-pounds. And we're going to uh, continue to go down until the groups uh, get bigger again and we know that we have passed uh, our sweet spot. The reason that I start at 47 foot-pounds with the heavy barrels is because that is the average torque at which I have found uh, my sweet spot and I have done this to hundreds of guns. The reason that I use um, 60 foot-pounds with the GI barrel is because 60 foot-pounds was my average um, sweet spot with the lighter barrel. 